appreciate your time and what we know is an extremely busy week for you and your team. Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement previewing your upcoming matchup against Southern in the SWAC championship game. Uh, first and foremost, I'm excited about the matchup. They're well coached. I have a up, the utmost respect for their coach. He's doing a wonderful job. I'm just hearing statistics on the defense um, with leading the nation with defense. sacks and touchdowns. Defense defense, touchdowns. Defensive touchdowns. Defensive touchdowns. That is un- darn believable, and the nation needs to know about that because that is a feat in itself, and it shows you the consistency and the coaching talent and the players that they have. Um we're excited for this opportunity. We're excited to put our offense on display once again. Our defense, um, which has been playing lights out, our kicking game, our kickers uh, don't miss <laughs> the punting game. We're, we're excited. And to really uh, have this influx of economics into our city once again is going to be unbelievable. Everyone is going to win in some sort of fashion, except for one team on the field this week. But I think it's truly a blessing to to have the championship here. And it's really a, a rivalry type game. So I appreciate it. I can I, I look forward to it. I can't wait. I anticipate it. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. First question goes to Charles Bishop. Coach, how you doing? How you doing, sir? Uh, I wanted to ask, and I know you've answered this before uh, because you like to maintain the continuity, but uh, does not having a, a weekend off, uh, essentially a bye week this past weekend, uh, does it not help the team with regards to the overall team health? Uh, this team has been going for about seven weeks straight now. No, I've never seen someone say, oh, my God, I played so much better with the bye week. No, <laughs> I, I don't coach better with a bye week. I coach better just with a good defense and a good offense. <laughs> sure, sure. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> bye week. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why we have bye weeks. Sometimes it, it, it helps with injuries and all that, give guys uh opportunity to rest, but we don't want real rest, man. We've been resting all summer, all winter, all spring, and we we ready to get down. A quick follow-up, and you mentioned uh, uh, the anticipated uh, crowd, uh, the economic boost to the city, but uh, your overall thoughts with regards to um, Jackson putting on a show again for the SWAC championship? Um, I don't know about the show. You can't put on a show unless you win the game. Um, we, I, I'm just hopeful and, and, and thoughtful that it's no crime, it's no murders, it's none idiotic that takes away from the goodness of this moment. Um, SWAC championship two years straight in Jackson, Mississippi. The economic boost is tremendous, I, and I and I love it. Everyone's going to win, so we don't need robbing and stealing and, and hustling and shooting and all that craziness. So I, I think we all win, and I think we need to learn how to understand what a true blessing this is. And it, it's a respect. I know some fans go get get a little overboard, but. I have the utmost respect for this program. I, I, I really do. I really have the utmost respect for the coach, the whole program, and what they bring to the table. It's going to be exciting. No doubt. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, sir. Next question goes to Zach McKinnell. Hope, hope the bye week and the holidays went well for you, Coach. Um, you were named the finalist again for the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year Award, and there's only been one back-to-back winner in the history of the award, uh, Craig Bowl. Back in 2012, 2013, how much would it mean to you to be the second back-to-back winner of the Eddie Robertson Award this year? Uh, well, that that is, let me answer this like a coach would. That would be tremendous. It shows how good our staff is. It shows how talented our players are. It it shows the program. It shows how forward thinking our program is. And uh, I'm elated to even be mentioned for such a prestigious award award as that. So, you know, getting nominated uh, in the second year straight, it, it's a tremendous blessing, but it's no way I could begin to take the credit without the, the social media team, the trainers, the equipment managers, the staff, everyone included in what all we bring to the table here in Jackson State. And, and a quick follow up about the game this weekend. What were the, what was some of the bigger things that you guys wanted to work on throughout this bye week that you guys saw on film from the Alcorn State game that you guys needed to correct going into this rematch with Southern? Um, explosiveness, explosiveness offensively. Um, we 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 have explosive players. We just gotta 
figure out a way to get them the ball doing what they do best. We got to run the football effectively. That means dominate the the front line, and we have the players to do such a thing. Um, we just got to be consistent in all the things we do. We got to finish the, the things about uh, the, the words of the week. We got to finish. We got to finish. We got to finish whatever we start. We got to flat out finish um, our assignment of the year, and that's to be dominant. Thank you, Coach, and good luck this weekend. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Next question goes to Kendrick Marshall. Yeah, Coach. Um, over the weekend, Pete Thelma with uh, Fox Sports reported that uh, Colorado had made you an offer to become their next head coach. Mm -hmm. How um, true is their report, and is there any mutual interest between you and the school? Yeah, definitely. The report is true. Um, they're not the only ones. The report is true. I'm not going to sit on here and tell all my business, but they're not the only ones. And I would be a, a liar if I told you they didn't. You know they did. I know they did. Everybody there know they did. So it is what it is. That's not uh, my focus right now. My focus is to to win and to be dominant and then to to uh, not even to go on to the to there in the celebration bowl. My focus is right here in this beloved stadium to be dominant on Saturday. That's my focus. And I keeps the main thing, the main thing. And everyone that knows me know that about me. I have an innate ability to focus and keep the main thing, the main thing. As a follow-up, um, how do you not let these reports distract you from preparing for each week and preparing your team to play? Well, to someone else that hadn't been that dude, it, it gets uh, intoxicating. I've been praying for a long time, dog. <laughs> attention ain't nothing new to me it's like like come on this this is it, i'm not being uh braggadocious or whatever that's a wonderful word in the braggadocious just came up with that i think i said that a few weeks ago but this ain't new to me being in the spotlight ain't new to me i gotta just turn that light and channel it to my kids channel it to my coaching staff channel it to the support staff we we've been in the spotlight for a long time individually it's time to bring us collectively. And that's what I've been doing ever since I touched foot on this campus and into uh, HBCU football. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, my man. Next question goes to James Hill. Hey, Coach. I hope you and everybody at Jackson State University are well. Uh, Shador Sanders, uh, in 24 <laughs> games, 6,314 passing yards. Nice. 62 oh, touchdowns. Just, Right. Talk Ooh. a little bit about Shador, his development, and again, he's carving them up like turkeys, and he's getting better every day. Well, we've been slacking the second half of the season because a few people have caught up with us, and we got to be a little more innovative, and Brad is doing a good job of that right now in the lab. But Shador is progressing. Uh, each week, each game, he's progressing. He called the team up at the end of practice today and got in their butts a little bit about the focus and the understanding of the challenge and what we have at hand. And uh, they're trying to make history and they're trying to be dominant and making it. He's, he's a football guy. I mean, he's a coach's son. He's a football guy who loves it, lives it, eats it. He likes to snot. Now he likes to find the things of life, but he know he's, he know he has to earn those things, but I, I love what he's putting on display and uh, the best is yet to come. I, I truly believe the best is yet to come. We had a, we, we do brunch. Every Sunday morning, he and uh, my oldest son and my my, my daughter, and uh, one of the things I challenged him to, I talked about all his interceptions. And what is it, six of them? Six, six, six. Yeah. And each one of them, the defensive back didn't make a great play. All of them was gifts that he put a bow on and just handed it to the, the opposing team. And I said, think about that. Think, think about those plays, and I want you to really eliminate those things because those are decision-making flaws. And to think that you're as successful as you are, but six decision-making flaws you can eliminate, think about how much better you could possibly be. And those are the conversations we have because you can't just come at him any kind of way. You got to have an intellectual part to come at him because, you know, <laughs> He, he knows this game, and uh, when I'm about to get on him, he say, wait till you watch the tape. And then I watch the tape, and I see what he saw. Sometimes we can be critical until we start seeing what the quarterback sees. But I'm proud of him. Coach, the Eddie Robinson Trophy is on display every summer at Media Day in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. It's also earned by the winning coach, uh, and you won it last year, and you have an extensive trophy case, and we all know that. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about – working hard and earning another one this weekend at Jackson State 
and what that could look like uh, to add another victory as, as you continue to work hard and guide your team. Well, the Bible talks about seeking you first, and then all these things shall be added. Um, we're trying to be dominant. We've been saying that since day one. And when you're dominant, all those things are added. All the accolades for the team, all the accolades for the coaches, all the accolades for the support staff and so forth. All those things are added. So we don't think about those things. We we don't set out and say, well, we want to have the uh, the best freshman. We want to have the best this. We don't, we don't think like that. We've been saying since day one, we want to be dominant. And then all those things are therefore added. Have a blessed week, sir. Thank you, my man. Try to get a few more questions in quickly. The question goes to Jeff Lightsey. Hey, Coach Prime. I understand just going back on a question that you were asked earlier. Uh, you said you've been prime for a long time, but your team and your program haven't always been prime or Deion Sanders. I just want to know how do you prevent all the rumors that are circulating around your name, prevent it from hurting? 